I wanted to take a second to talk about mastering briefly and let you guys know what it is and what it is not. Okay, um, let's just walk through the basics. I wanted to freestyle this. There's no script here. But mastering essentially is taking the mix of a song, everything that's been recorded, tracked down, balanced out, plugins applied, all the processing, everything that you've done has culminated into this song that you've now completed. And the final step to that is going through the last minute checklists of tools that you have at your disposal to give the final touches on that track um, to get it to quote unquote professional level. Now that term is a little bit um, subjective, but there are some objective things that we're trying to go for when it, in terms of radio playability and professional presentation of the highest uh, quality of the song that we are aiming for. So in a nutshell, when we're mastering, the number one goal that we're trying to aim for is getting the track loud, loud competitively, meaning when we play your song next to somebody else's song that's professional, we don't want your song to be insanely quieter or insanely louder. We want it to be proportionately close to the average of um, professional music that we hear. So it has a very presentability to it um, where it's not off-putting or lesser tier. We Sometimes we automatically call a quieter song lesser quality, which isn't always the case and which is why it's somewhat subjective, but there's a somewhat goal of loudness that we are trying to get to when we master a song. Now, the art approach um, to the checklist that we're walking through when we master the song is that there are some last minute tools we can use to give highlight touches to an already great sounding song. And this is more of the artfulness to the approach. It's trying to squeeze the last bit of juice out of the song. And once you've um, kind of handled the number one objective, which is getting the song loud enough uh, without distortion, um, is dynamics processing, last minute tone shaping, um, any levels of saturation, any levels of resonance or frequency cutting or boosting. We call that kind of tone shaping and uh, tone trimming. Um, what else? Um, you know, limiting, hard limiting, soft limiting, things like that. Um, we're walking through a set of processes uh, with plugins and hardware to try and shape the sonics and musicality of the song um, in context of the loudness that we're trying to achieve as well. Now, when somebody's mastering your song, generally speaking, you are sending the final wave, uncompressed wave file of the mix. This is one file. Um, that has all the layers consolidated into what the song is. And it's not um, layered out. Um, a lot, sometimes people can think, well, I'll layer the song out so that the, the mastering engineer can have more control over volumes and stuff. And it's like, um, in very rare cases, that might be necessary. But for the most part, the mastering engineer only wants to master. Um, any volume changes, reverb changes, special effect changes, any kinds of automation, um, f resonance taming, boosting, balancing, that are, those are all things that typically take place in the mixing process. And anytime you go into the mastering process wanting to do those same things, nine times out of 10, your song is not ready to be mastered. You need to go back in the mix and make the song as best as you possibly can. Now, that gets a little bit um, distorted when you have an amateur artist because an amateur artist uh, might not understand 
what the mixing engineer's job is versus the mastering engineer. And a lot of times the artist is the mix engineer, air quotes. And so they're really just trying to get their song to sound better. Um, but it's important that you clearly communicate what's happening. Otherwise, one person might be working harder than the other. You might have um, a client who's taking advantage of an engineer uh, who's not really clearly explaining what their process is. So when he pays for the project, um, the artist is expecting one thing and requiring too much of the engineer or vice versa. You might not have clearly communicated so the artist is paying for something that they don't really know um, what they should have expected. All they know is when they got the song back, it wasn't what they expected. And so they feel uh, like they were let down. So I just wanted to uh, kind of explain that for my audience specifically. Um, it's important to communicate clearly that, hey, in the mastering process, which is why most of the time it's cheaper unless you're in a certain tier of um, song making, a uh, certain caliber of professionalism, but it's generally cheaper because mastering doesn't take as much work, though uh, a mastering engineer, hey guys, mastering engineers get paid to be mastering engineers. You know, the mastering engineer, there's many in fact, some of the greatest mastering engineers you know do not mix. You know, they might be somewhat qualified to, but they are masters of mastering. And people pay mix engineers to do the mix and mastering engineers to do the master because they are two separate sciences. They coexist, but um, they need to be focused on. And a lot of times, the type of ears and goals and creativity that a mastering engineer has cannot have the mix um, issues of interference to be as proficient in that space. So that's why, you know, yeah, it's convenient and efficient for the mixing engineer to also be the mastering engineer. But a lot of times, you might not get the finishing touches to really max out the beauty of the record if one guy is having to wear two very critical hats that take different approaches to be wildly successful at um, to make the music as great as humanly possible. So that's why they are two different hats. And that's why I offer them as two different services. Uh, for my clients, I say, generally speaking, when you buy a mix from me, it includes the master. Um, and we handle that, but some people think that they've preserved a sound that they don't want to get rid of and they only need mastering. And so that's when you would send to a guy like me the two track or the uncompressed wave file of your entire mix. And at this stage, everything should be complete. Your balance should be correct, your ad libs, your backgrounds should be sitting at the proper balance. The song to you should already sound ready to go. And then that's when you say, okay, mastering engineer, I want you to take what I already think is amazing and put the final touches, the final tone shaping, cutting of bad frequencies, boosting of, of sweet sonic frequencies, maybe saturation, uh, soft clipping and hard clipping. And then we want to get that, once all that stuff is done and we've kind of sweetened the sonics a little bit more and processed um, those vocals as much as we can, we now want to bring it up as loud as we possibly can so that it's not only competitive, but it also has an edge and a professionalism to it that we're now ready to show to the world. And we know that by the time the mastering is done that this song is not only going to compete with music in that space, but it really has sonic signature that allows it to stand out. And so that's what mastering is, guys. Um, again, for amateurs in the space, um, sometimes uh, I know in I have uh, one or two clients who I work with where um, we kind of have a hybrid workflow where I still work with some stemmed layers as I'm mastering to have a little bit of control. But that's merely circumstance due to like me trying to assist the artist and not complicate. Um, their understanding uh, to get the job done because everybody is not um, musically and mix literate, I would say. And so sometimes um, you you need to consolidate and be willing to be flexible to get the job done for the artist if it's within your means. And that's some situations that I have. Um, but hopefully you guys understand mastering. 
Uh, I got a little bit nerdy with me for a little bit on what's actually going on behind the scenes with mastering. And uh, ultimately, guys, if you do not have a great mix, you will not get a great master. If you do not have a great mix in your personal eyes, do not send it to get mastered at all because you cannot polish a dog turd in this space. Um, a great master will only highlight how terrible your song actually was to begin with. And if you're just trying to milk out the next little bit ounce of better quality out of your song, don't expect the moon and the stars if it doesn't have great recordings uh, in your mix. Um, I don't care if that's instrumentally or vocally. Don't hand it to a mastering engineer and be hoping he's going to send you back something that sounds like you were in a professional studio when you were in your room and it sounded subpar. Subpar mix, subpar master. It might be a little bit better, but again, you need to have in perspective what a healthy expectation is. So a lot of times, best thing you can do is tell the mastering engineer, hey, what can I expect? Do you have any examples of songs that you got and what you turned them into? Uh, and hopefully your engineer has a video like the one I'm making right now so that he can explain these things to you. So before you invest in your craft, you know what to expect and you know how to make it as prepared and as um, ready to go as possible for that next stage of bumping up the quality of the record. Hope that helped guys. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And if you have any questions as usual, hit me up. Peace.